Okay, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to this talk. And uh, I'd like to thank the organisers of DevOps for, um, uh, for making, making space for me. Even though it's a half an hour and uh, we're going to be pushed for time. But what I want to talk to you about today is, well, I want to talk to you about my front door. But I'm going to, I'm going to go a bit off topic because I've got some other things to talk about in, along those lines as well. So this is my front door. Um, this is me. So I'm going to rip through these slides because in a half an hour we're going to be really a bit pushed. So I've written a couple of books on Java and I'm a Java champion and a Java one rock star a few times. This is the first computer I used. I sometimes put this slide up, not very often, but occasionally. It was a long, long, long time ago, and this was, um, well, I, thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. It was, uh, I didn't program it, but I used it as part of, it was attached to a spectrometer I had to work on all night, so I got an opportunity to play computer games. Probably one of the first people to have ever played computer games in the 1970s. They weren't very good, I have to tell you. But we, we got 4K words, 16-bit words in those days, and about four decades later, at, at, uh, at Java 1 in 2015, Oracle made a nice present to me of a a uh, Raspberry Pi, which, um, like most people who get Raspberry Pis, sat on, uh, I, I left it sitting on my desk for um, well, quite a long time, gathering dust and wondering what to do with it. So, um, uh, so, so uh, what the, 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 my idea was this, eventually, after, after a while. In the winter, I don't have so much work, and so I found myself kind of uh, staring at this thing and thinking, well, what, what will I do with it? What I, did with it, what I decided to do with it was to use it on my house. This is, my, this is the street I live on. Um, it's uh, it was, it built in the 1780s, as you can see, and it's kind of cool because it's got a, a mountain at the end of it. You can just see that mountain there. If from, the, uh, from the mountain, this is what the street looks like, and I live in the... Um, I live on, uh, where, about where the sign says KC over there, if, if this thing will work. That's good. Uh, rough, roughly there. This is a picture of my front door, or the front of the house, rather. And, um, the, and you can see that the, um, that the front of the house uh, is decorated with, with these blue signs. You can see them above, above the door here. And the blue, the, these blue signs indicate that it belongs to the University of Edinburgh, or rather that most of the flats here belong to the University of Edinburgh. This is where I live. I kind of live inside the university, as it were. And uh, this is good, because this is very cool, because they mend the roof. And mending the roof on these tenements is pretty expensive. And they paint the windows and all that. Um, and so, you know, like, what's, not, what's not to like about this? And the answer is, well, what there is not to like about this is that at the weekends and in the evenings that everyone goes home from the offices and, they, um, and the place is deserted. Well, that's actually really good. The upside of that is I can make as much noise as I want and nobody makes any noise to disturb me, except my son and he's two floors up on the other side of the staircase. But what happens when the Amazon man comes to make his deliveries? So uh, here he is. Disguises my lodger, but there you go. Did you get that? Can you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> it's every, I know, it's everybody's problem, but it, but it did make me think about it a bit, though. Let me get this back again. Um, right, see if I can get this to work. Good. I do. I do. Uh, oh, oh, it's showing it the wrong way around. Shit. See life, very complicated. Right, so, um, uh, so, what are we, so what am I going to do about this? Um, I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi. So, so here's the agenda. I'm going to make a groovy door opener, and then we're going to see about phoning it, and then we're going to see about a controller. A controller for it as well. Here's the entry phone system. The, 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 the flats were built in the uh, 1780s, and it looks like the entry phone system was built not long afterwards. Um, the, 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 the idea is, well, it's kind of standard, standard sort of thing, where the, um, the, somebody speaks into the, presses the buzzer, speaks into the, in, into the uh, microphone there. I hear it in the flat on the right-hand side here. We've got the... Uh, we've got, we've got the um, the intercom at my end in the flat, and in due course, I, um, I press the button, and, and that operates the solenoid at the door there and lets them in. So uh, t uh, after a while, I was inspired enough to take off the front of the, the, front of the intercom, and this is what I saw behind it, just some 12-volt wiring, and there's a couple of terminals there, which turn out that when you short them, 
uh, opens, uh, or what opens the solenoids. So the connection between the Raspberry Pi and the front door is exactly that. If I just can short those two terminals out, then I can open the front door. Uh, how do you do that with a Raspberry Pi? Well, it's really straightforward, it turns out. Not to me, I'm not a hardware guy. I'm very much not a hardware guy. So I went through a lot of different iterations and eventually a couple of Raspberry Pis because the GPIO controller on the chip is not protected against excess voltage. You make a little mistake, 5 volts instead of 3.3 volts. Uh, does anybody want uh, some nearly new Raspberry Pis? With, they, they work almost completely. So, so it's, it's hardware 101. You'll find it in, the raspberry, in, a, in any good uh, cookbook about Raspberry Pi recipes. The, the, this thing here is a, is a, a MOSFET. It costs just a, a couple of euros or less if you, if, you, if you buy them singly. And all that you need to do, it just amplifies the, um, the, the voltage from the, 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 the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. These are the GPIO pins in, the, in this schematic. And all you need to do is just raise the, the voltage on one of these pins to 3.3 um, to volts, and then the, this will open the gate on the, on the, on the, um, the MOSFET which is a power device. It's very, it's very robust. You don't, you don't blow those out, and that'll let the current pass through and open the solenoid. And that's about the story for the hardware. It's really not very complicated at all. I've got it simulated in this, um, uh, for this talk in a little breadboard here with a, with a buzzer attached to it, which sometimes works. So I, I'm afraid I took the slide with the picture out, so you'll just have to take it from me. If you hear the buzzer going, then that's the proxy in this talk for the door opening. Right? It, will, it will really work the same way. Um, so how do you get that to, to, to happen uh, in, on the Pi? Well, if you're a Java person, you'll use Java for it. There's a, there's a kit for the uh, a Java uh, software kit for the, for the Raspberry Pi called pi for j which is really easy to install and, and actually works really well. Uh, and, e and one of the examples in it is actually uh, manipulates the GPIO. Here's what it looks like when, I've, um, when I used it. Um, I've I changed it around a little bit, and so the, the stuff in bold just shows that I've that I've made it possible, unlike in the uh, unlike in the original, to just uh, to have it um, sound more than once, or to have to have the to have the pin go high more than once, so that uh, you can tell, so that I can change it during the talk, and you can tell that I, that I haven't just pre-programmed everything. So that's, that's the Java that we're going to be running. And this is really, that's really the story as far as, um, as, far as getting the, the Raspberry Pi to operate the front door is concerned. So you, you, may, you may wonder, like, I, I got through that pretty quickly, but we've got, to, we've, got to make the ras we've got to get the Raspberry Pi to work, and I've got to get my delivery man to talk to that, and that's a bit more of a, that's a, bit more of a push. So the next part is then, how is he going to phone the, the Raspberry Pi? Well, why, why does he want to phone the Raspberry Pi? I thought about different user interfaces for this. Well, you, I mean, the obvious thing to have would be a, a mobile app. That's what people usually use nowadays. But I can't really expect, um, I can't really expect him to have, have it installed on his phone. I could put a web page up and maybe have a QR code on the, on the front door, but that, again, that's a lot of hassle. So I thought, well, eh, well, the one thing that everybody carries around is a phone, and the one thing that everybody can do is speak into the phone. I, I thought of actually using um, keyed codes, the D DTMF, the codes that, uh, that you operate through the, the buttons on your phone. But I thought that was going to be too easy. Actually, that's, that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. Um, but uh, for, the, for the original, what I, what I decided to do was the, go the whole hog and use voice recognition. So um, there is voice recognition in, the, in this demo, but it's not in, in this talk, but it's not quite there. It's not in that place. So how are you going to, uh, get, how are you going to uh, have the Raspberry Pi be operated by the phone? Well, you're going to need private branch exchange software on the phone. So there is actually a free, um, uh, a free open source private branch exchange uh, software called Asterisk. And it, and it actually it works on Linux, and therefore it does actually work on the Raspberry Pi. There are a few problems about it. So it's not, not that it's not extremely capable, and in fact, it's in very widespread commercial use. Um, the problem about it is that it's, uh, it exists in very many versions. It, it, it uh, evolves really quickly. The documentation doesn't, or often doesn't indicate what version it's on. The documentation assumes you know a lot about voice over IP. Um, the, there's... 
there are many parts of asterisk which you'd really like to use which turn out not to be free because the company that, uh, the company that is responsible for writing and maintaining asterisk, which does most of the work, also makes its living from consultancy. So you can see where that's headed. <clears throat> I tried using something called Free PBX. I'm mentioning this because you might go down the same road. It's a web-based, open-source GUI manager for Asterisk, but, um, but you find out after you've been using it quite a short time that many of the management modules are commercial and quite expensive. So that turns out not to be such a great idea. There's a Debian package for Asterisk, but it's out of date. Uh, so, the, so you're down to installing it from source. And in fact, I found for nearly everything I was doing for this uh, for this. Uh, project that uh, installing from source almost always was the thing you needed to do. So you install from source in a, kind of fairly, in a fairly standard way. Once you can find the source, it's not, it's not too difficult. Now you have to script asterisk to make it do the thing you want. So my idea is not just that uh, my delivery man is going to be able to just simply telephone the Raspberry Pi. He's going to have to have some, uh, some, level, of have to have some level of security because um, uh, uh, because we're interested in, um, because what we want is to make sure that the door isn't going to open for just anybody. So um, I think I missed that. Uh, so Asterisk contains everything you need, but uh, the, the problem about it is that um, the learning curve for Asterisk is steep and it's long. And it, and you will, the, the, it has very, very many built in operations, but actually learning how to use them is really tough. Um, some of the products, like the speech recognition modules, which, we, which we're going to want for this, aren't free. Uh, the documentation isn't great. There are a lot of different versions. And the dial plan scripting language, the dial plan is the script that actually drives the application, is really terrible. I'm actually going to stop. I should have done the demonstration a little earlier on, but um, because Keynote isn't working quite the right way. I'm going, to, I'm, going to do, I'm going to do a little demonstration now just to see whether we can... Um, uh, make sure that really I have got Groovy and Java working in it because, and it'll also give me the opportunity, which I'm dying to do, to show you to show you the dial plan. So first of all, I'm going to connect to the Pi, and I'm going to um, uh, and, and 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 I'm just going to find a Groovy script to run to run that ja to run that Java program. Uh, is that is that uh, visible? Is, is the font big enough for the people at the back? Uh, okay, so. Um, let me go. I'll, I'm going to go to where, where Pi, for, Pi for J is installed. <coughs> and I'm going to, um, and I'm going to run a, oh, Let's have a quick look at, the, at, at, the, at what we're going to run. So uh, I can, I can um, uh, look at my GPIO example. This is, the, this, is the one that, this is the one that I just showed you an extract of. So, so here, here's, the, here's the, 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 the basic Java code that, is going to, that, that, that we're going to run here. But I, want to, but I want to run it from Groovy, and the reason I want to run it from Groovy is because the dial plan scripting language is so awful, I want an alternative. And it just feels to me like uh, I'm going to be evolving this thing on the Pi, and a scripting language is going to be suitable for the kind of quick iterations I want to make to, I want to, make to the code. So let's have a So the, the, um, the Groovy code that, that I'll need to, to run this isn't really very complicated. Um, uh, it, it, in this case, in this case, all, all, all I need to do is basically just call the main method of that of that Java class. So if that works, and you can see that it should sound the buzzer three times uh, if, if, it's, if everything is working, which doesn't always happen in these in these talks. So to do that, I'll uh, I'll run. Uh, well, I better run. It. I have to run it as sudo because everything that you do with the Pi needs to be. You need to have root access, and um, I'll just need to bring in the the Pi for J libraries, and that should do it. Uh, run. Okay. So if it, it should run three. It should sound three times the buzzer. I'm a happy man, well, for the moment. Uh, okay, so, um, <laughs> right. But we're, not, we're, not, we're not out of the wood yet, I'm afraid. There's, we've got much, much more complicated things to, to do yet. So here I've got, I'm going to show you the, the dial plan, because I'm a sadist. Um, pseudo vi uh, slash etc slash asterisk, asterisk, um, asterisk slash extensions. 
Kubernetes.conf. And this is what it looks like. Um, and you can see that this is not something... It, the, what's really uh, awful about this, I mean, it's a scripting language, what's really awful about this is it doesn't have any control, uh, it doesn't have any control constructs. So actually, uh, m I mean, writing loops in this is going to be really, really difficult. And you can see that, uh, there's, you can see that it's, it's really it's like writing assembler. An elaborate script in this is going to be pretty horrible. That's why I decided to go over to Groovy. Okay, so I think I, go, I think I can go back to this now. I'm just going to try, if I can do, to um, to, to swap the uh, to exchange the the uh, displays. Mm, it doesn't look like I can do that, does it? No. Okay. Right. We'll not, we'll not worry about that. So I'm going to use. So I'm going to use a. Um, I'm going to use another. Um, I know what I've done wrong. That's better. Right. I think I should be able to make this work now. Is that okay? <laughs> right. Are we good? Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> well, we will be good. Right. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so I'm going to use Groovy. Um, I'm going to uh, asterisk Java has a uh, has a way is a, a library for accessing Java from from the from um, from inside of asterisk. It supports something called fast AGI, not AGI. Did I miss a slide out here now? Um, so so there's the difference between fast AGI and AGI is that one of them is a one of them is a client server solution, fast AGI. AGI is like the old fashioned CGI. Um, uh, web gateway that we used to have a million years ago, where in order to in order to service every single user request, a fresh process is started. So fast AGI is a much better much better idea. It, run, it runs on a freestanding server, which you have to start separately with code like this. That's pretty straightforward, and then. There's a kind of complicated business where, um, some, where a piece of code like this in the dial plan, what's the, what the code that's shown on the dial plan there uh, is, um, is dispatched to the, to the AGI server. The AGI server looks at the properties file to find out what's, what, how it should run that. It goes to, it goes to a, a script, and the idea of the, the, the groovy script is to... Uh, is to uh, act as a uh, act as a gateway to the to a, to your Java to your to your Groovy, sorry the Groovy AGI script acts as a gateway to your custom uh, to your custom script. In my case, I'm, in my case, it's run G GPIO example, not Groovy, and that gets sent via the via the Groovy AGI script. Uh, with the and the important thing is that what's passed in is the AGI channel, and the AGI channel is the representation of asterisk is asterisk's representation of the call. So it includes things like, for example, the number that's been called from and the protocols that have been used to get in and all that sort of thing. And so now, inside of the Groovy script at the bottom right, I now have access to everything that the that asterisk has. And so now I'm actually ready. I'm actually ready to make the calls. <coughs> So that's um, so so that's that's my that's that's the story here. The um, the dial plan I can now write the dial plan in Groovy, and the dial plan looks like this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. When um, when I tried to this is the or at least this is the straightforward summary of it. When I was using voice recognition, so the idea was I'm going to I'm going to um, get the I'm going to ask the user for the for their uh, for the code that they're going to use to get in the access code. I'm going to I'm going to record it. I'm going to convert it into a format that my voice recognition service can understand because I'm using a I'm using an offline. I'm online voice recognition service. I'm actually using the IBM Watson voice recognition service, though others would do. And then I'm going to and, and then I'm going to try and recognise it. Let's see how that works. If we can, if, if, if I can actually make that work. So, um, so we'll go back to. So we'll go back here. I need to start asterisk up. I got a bit taken by. Uh, um, where's my, where am I? Where am I here? I've lost my cursor. Sorry, I've lost my cursor. Uh, okay, so one thing I could do is, uh, is mirror this, couldn't I? It's not my day. See demos. I can't get. 
sorry. Uh, right. Am I on now? No, still not on. Machine trouble, I beg your pardon. Uh, the demo gods are not with me today, and time is not on my side. Ah, got it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to start up. I'm going to start up the server. Ah, I'm going to go to go to, go to the Pi. Start up the server. Um, I'll go to the Pi here as well and start up asterisk. So this is the server going. Uh, I have to. Um, unfortunately, I have to. Um, I have to restart asterisk um, because it starts up with the wrong with the wrong parameters here. <coughs> so now we'll start. I'm starting at asterisk. And. Um, and I'm just going to. I'm going to go to the. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the uh, to the dial plan and just check that it's uh, looking at the right thing. So it's that's right. So it's got it's got a script called Open Sesame Groovy here, which is the one that I'm expecting is going to um, um, is, is the one that is going to expect voice recognition. So in, in here we're going to see what what, the, what voice recognition makes of what I say. So I need I need a phone to be able to get at this. So so the phone I'm, I'm using is, is for the moment is a soft phone on on the um, on, on the on the Mac. Um, it's not uh, that's obviously not an ideal solution because um, I'm not going to expect my um, my delivery man to be able to get in and, and use the use the phone inside. So I'm going to have to find a solution to that as well. But for the moment, let's let's use a soft phone and see see how that works. I've got a user here called Devox, and I'm going to try calling this, and I'm going to see whether or not I can actually get a, whether I can manage to say the code I need. The code I need is two one three four six. It's hard coded in at the moment, but we'll do something better in a little while. <clears throat> Please say your entry code now. Two one three four six. I'm hoping it's not going to work, because that, it'll spoil my last demo if it does. So at the top here, we should be able, we should see what the what the voice recognition service made of it. I hope. Ah. It worked, unfortunately. That's just such a pain, right? So, so the so voice recognition actually did uh, did succeed in uh, in in, fi in finding it. Um, oh, I see. Sorry, I, I missed I missed where, where the where the voice recognition went. I went out to Watson. I did a REST API call to the Watson uh, speech recognition service, and my two one three four six that I spoke got sent back as text, and I translated that into digits and. Um, and the uh, and, and the the result was that it matched the uh, that it matched the stored value. You could have obviously different stored values for different people with different uh, expiration dates and different numbers of times they could be used and all that sort of thing. So we've got uh, plenty of scope for uh, a, a web interface for that and lots of insecurities. But at the moment it's just hard coded in. So um, so the voice recognition uh, has improved since I was using this before. I have to say. Uh, I used to have a lot of trouble in, uh, in, in demos with that. My, my, my basic uh, conclusion was that what you should really do in these situations is um, use DTMF. And DTMF is actually a much, much easier and more reliable. I will use that in the next, in the next demo. <coughs> So, um, so, the, so, the, so you might be wondering why, what on earth is the use of this when the delivery, when my delivery man obviously can't get into the um, can't get into the flat to use the soft phone, and and the answer to that question is that I, what I really what I really want to do is I'm going to use um, I'm going to get in from the from the public switch network. Uh, I can't get in from the public switch network when I'm in Belgium because I can't manage to get a SIM card for my USB modem that has um, international roaming. So I'm out of luck there. But in, in the UK, when I give this talk, I can phone it from my mobile. Well, that's, uh, that, that's just the, 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 way, it, the way it goes. 
So the last part of the talk, then, cr crammed into the remaining five minutes, is let's take this a little bit further and do something more with it, because natural language processing is now the big deal. And rather than just having this stupid dialogue where the, where the, where the pie just asks for, just asks for your, uh, your code, what would be a lot nicer would be to actually do something, do something kind of... Uh, have, uh, extend the system and make it a lot more intelligent. Natural language processing is a big deal nowadays. Machine translations, spam filters, healthcare diagnosis, NSA spying. There's just no limit to the, the number of applications. Uh, and conversational systems that are based on it include chatbots and virtual assistants in the form of uh, the things like Siri and so forth that are now really becoming big, and, of course, home control systems based on them. And so you might have seen about Google Home and Amazon Echo, and there's a lot more of that kind of thing to come. IBM Watson is something along these lines. It's a co it combines conversation and information retrieval. There's two different uh, things combined in the same one. But if, if anyone was in on the talk earlier on this afternoon here, you had like three hours of real detail about IBM Watson and, uh, and the conversation uh, feature, which I couldn't begin to come near to. It uses domain knowledge for, uh, for specific industries. It's obviously targeted at specific industries, and, and uh, it's, quite, it's really elaborate. Answers come with confidence estimates, and it's exposed in the Bluemix framework. <coughs> So we're going to have a. We're going to see. I've got. I've got here a little somewhere. I have a um, uh, a, a, a Watson dialogue, a conversation dialogue. So if I and I can actually try it out in text here. I'm online to it. So it it announces, "Hello, I am the number eighteen control system. What can I do for you?" And I say, "I want you to play some play some music for me." Can't oh, can't see the screen. Thank you. Right, that's really worth knowing. Thank you. How's that? Any better? Good. Okay, so I, so so I, I'll start again from the I'll start again from the clear. So I'm going to start a conversation with it, and you can see the the, the box that's outlined in green there is the one that um, is the one that uh, is currently in, in use. Uh, that's the that's the current dialogue node. And I say I want to play some music, and. If I say play music, it will make its way through the, through the, through the system, and it said, "Oh, like uh, play is a play is a synonym for turn on in my system." And the appliance it found was a music player, so it says, "What kind of music?" And I say, "I, I like some jazz." And it says, "Okay, I'm playing jazz for you." And that, and I've got a node there which does that. Actually. I'm sort of most of the way towards being able to control the Sonos system in my flats. That's not totally imaginary. Now, let's see whether we can get this thing to, um, to actually work, open the front door for us in real life. That would be quite nice, or in real buzzer, in real buzzer life anyway. So the, I, I'm going to need to use a different script for this. This is um, uh, it's called conversation.groovy, because, because this one sends to, the, sends to the Amazon system, and it doesn't use my voice, but it uses a synthesized voice with text-to-speech from the... Um, uh, from the um, uh, it, it brings down text from the, from the, uh, from the service, from the Watson service, and synthesizes it using, uh, using a kind of fairly primitive voice synthesizer on the, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So you'll hear, you'll hear what that sounds like, I hope. Well, it'll, yeah, you will hear what it sounds like well, through the soft phone. So I think we're good to go with that. Let's see what happens. Um. Hello, I am the number 18 control system. What can I do for you? Open. Please choose something I can control. The front door, the music player, or the heating system. The front door. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Please try again. <laughs> well, you have seen it. You have seen it work already, and I'm afraid I'm out of time there. The, the, um, I, I don't know. I don't know why it didn't work in that case. What did, what did it make of the front? Oh, I see it got the front dog. Look, oh, brilliant! Brilliant! <laughs> what is the matter with you? <laughs> So, uh, so what I would like to do before before I finish, because I'm, because I'm I'm out of time, is just very quickly show you uh, how how this works when everything when everything really does go well, because it's kind of cool. So we just um, this is this is uh, definitely 
uh, what, we're he what we're headed for. Thank you very much.